All right, and now we see uh, Walker for a touchdown right there. And let's look on our stream real quick. Let's see what's going on. Uh, you see uh, Seattle hasn't scored yet. So this ESPN feed is way ahead of what people are seeing on TV. And this also lets you know if you're just manually betting with your phone in real time while you're watching the game, you're like completely gamp. Like everyone's ahead of you. So it's a complete, like it's the worst odds you could possibly have. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't be betting on this uh, in real time on your phone. And so you see uh, Walker here is gonna score a touchdown because we already saw the future because we're looking at the raw data. But the problem is someone else probably has better data than us or someone in the stadium or whatever, and it probably has a slight edge there. So I had the simplest idea when I was watching uh, TV. And so if you've been watching the game cast during a live game, you'll notice uh, there's this play-by-play -play that happens. And then every time there's a play, you'll see this win probability widget on the ESPN GameCast a change. And so if something happens, like for instance, in uh, last week's playoff game, uh, Brock Purdy threw a touchdown. You see right there on the right side, Brock Purdy passed short to McCaffrey for four uh, yards and a touchdown. You see uh, San Francisco's win probability was 61%. And after that play, it jumps up to 76%. And what you'll notice on a lot of the broadcasts is that the win probability and this play-by-play -play actually happens here in the data before it actually happens on the television. And so I wondered whether this data would actually move before the odds move on Kalshi. And so if I could get the data feed that ESPN uses and see when that probability spikes, maybe I can quickly programmatically place a trade on uh, Kalshi with their API, and then maybe it would spike right after that. And maybe I could flip the contract for like a five or 10% gain. And so that's the idea there. Seems kind of too simple to work. And so I want to demonstrate this. Uh, I have a live game. It's really the playoffs happening right now. Seahawks versus 49ers. I'm in San Francisco and I used to live in Seattle. So I really should be watching this game right now instead of making a, a trading bot. But I want to show uh, how this actually happens. So you see uh, Brock Purdy just threw an incomplete pass. And then right now you see I'm going over to the game. And Brock Purdy just threw an incomplete pass. So you can see how uh, this play happened on the ESPN data feed before it actually happens on TV. So you can imagine if someone just is naively on their mobile phone and trying to bet on the outcome of this game in real time with Kaushi, they're probably at a disadvantage if they're not using some type of fast uh, data feed. But you imagine there's probably someone ahead of us here. If I'm just using the ESPN free data here, someone probably has a direct feed at Sport Radar and is spending thousands of dollars a month for that. Or they have someone that's actually in the stadium, like sending a message really quickly. And so there's this whole data hierarchy that I'm finding, but I don't have the exact details for you of exactly who is first. Like when I, when I Google this, it says the ESPN GameCast is five to 15 seconds ahead of the standard live television broadcast, but it depends on who's actually broadcasting the game. Uh, if it's something that's on like YouTube TV, you're gonna see it much later because of streaming and buffering and things like that. And then it's different if, which, uh, if you're watching on cable or satellite, on CBS or Fox and so forth. Um, and then I, I was trying to figure out if where ESPN gets their data from. And I know that uh, this says they use sport rate, they do get sport radar data, but then sometimes they don't want to spoil the game. So they'll add a little bit of a delay there. And so uh, there's questions on to what the actual data hi hierarchy is. But my belief is that uh, based on my testing so far is that the people on Kaushi, whoever's the mo more uh, professional algorithmic uh, betters out there probably have the fastest data feed and are moving first. And I confirm that with a different game that the Kaushi odds were moving first, but I swear to God, there was some point in the past uh, that I saw Kaushi was moving a little bit slow. And I think as the uh, Kaushi has grown to have be a $10 billion company, unlike when we first discussed it, um, there's a lot more eyeballs on this and they're getting a lot of uh, sports betting related volume. And so there might've been some opportunities in the past in the sports market, but uh, probably not at this point uh, if you're trying to compete on speed with some free uh, data feed. Uh, so I'm not the expert on, on this topic, but I did uh, try this out and I wanted to share the architecture of this bot I made and demonstrate the code um, I wrote and how the web sockets and ESPN unofficial API works if you want to adapt this for your own purposes. 
All right, so let's do a quick walkthrough of some of the code and how this works and the architecture. You can see I ran this and lost money, but I'm sharing it anyway. Uh, why would I show something that lost money? Well, I still think it's valuable uh, to have this architecture. You see I have uh, complete logs of a game. I log all of the plays, the Cauchy prices, different uh, spikes and probability and all the different trades. I have a way to analyze logs. I have a bot that orchestrates everything. I have an ESPN client that pulls the, uh, the unofficial ESPN API for uh, odds and play-by-play. -play. I have a game finder. I have a Cauchy client that subscribes to a WebSocket so I can see all the prices moving in real time. And then I have a spike detector and a trade executor. And so you can see um, these architectural components um, don't just apply to these bot, this bot. Um, it can apply to any market that's on Cauchy. And so um, I'm always gonna need to subscribe to a WebSocket to get the latest uh, bin NAS data for a given uh, market. And I also need some way to programmatically uh, place trades and I might want to trade a spike in momentum and I might want to apply this to another market. Maybe I could call uh, Alpaca or Interactive Brokers API or something like that and trade equities based off something that ha happens on Cauchy or something happens on Polymarket, I place a trade on Cauchy, uh, things like that. There's a lot of different uh, experiments uh, you could try here. Um, so I have, this is written in Python here. And so how does the ESPN unofficial API work? Uh, where am I getting the signal from? Um, you see we have the play-by-play -play here, and you see in the URL we have this game ID, right? And if you look on GitHub, a lot of people have already reverse engineered the different endpoints, but if you look in your developer uh, console uh, of Chrome here, you'll see, you know, this data that's rendered on the UI comes from somewhere, and it's making a request to a backend endpoint that you can see uh, in your developer console here. And all of these different endpoints are uh, are documented. Uh, people have already reverse engineered this and figured out all the different endpoints that uh, ESPN uses, and you can just anonymously uh, request these. And so you can see there's different formats uh, for the game cast for NFL, NBA, uh, baseball, and so forth. So you can trade other sports if you want. And you see how they all have a certain format. And so what you'll see uh, when you do that, there's an actual URL site.web.api.espn.com. And I'm doing NFL, so I have football slash NFL, and then I give it an event ID. And so if I look at the game I wanna follow, this game ID is 4017 blah, 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 and then I put that in right there. And when you do that, you see this giant blob of JSON data, and that describes every single thing that's happening in the game. And if you search this, there's gonna be a list called win probability. And so you see this in array here, and this is from the very beginning of the game. And, if, and I was watching the game earlier. Uh, the very first play of the game, the Seahawks uh, ran a touchdown. Uh, they ran the kickoff back for a touchdown, right? And that happened in the ESPN feed before it happened on television. And so there was opportunity to maybe place a trade on that if you're able to beat all the other people on Cauchy. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, and so you can see uh, at the very beginning, uh, the probability of the Seahawks win was 59% but on the play right after they ran the touchdown, you see that spiked to 74%, right? Because they just scored. And so the idea is finding these spikes when one play makes a dramatic shift in the game, maybe you want to take some action on that, right? And then with each of these, um, these plays here, they have a play ID. And so if I look for this play ID here, you'll see also in this data, kickoff return touchdown, and you see who returned the 60 yard kick for a touchdown and what the penalty was, right? And so we have a complete description of every single play that happened in the game and how it affected the uh, win probability, at least based on the ESPN model. And that's the other thing, maybe the ESPN model is better at some things than the Cauchy people. I don't know who's better at knowing the odds. Maybe you think that ESPN is more accurate for some reason, and maybe there's an edge there. Uh, who knows? And so you can see here, um, I just fetched it one time manually in my browser. But we can do with Python, you can just use the uh, HTTP requests library and just uh, pull and re re request this every couple of seconds, and then you'll get each play as they come in. So you just keep hitting uh, this endpoint, right? And I added, I think, a two second delay uh, just so that we don't pull it and get rate limited, right? Uh, and so on my website, hackingthemarkets.com, I kind of wrote a little bit about the thesis here and how this might work. And I also said, I'm not trying to promote and glamorize uh, gambling or whatnot. I, have, I already have money, so this is just fun for me. 
uh, just to nerd about with. And then I uh, put a BART bot architecture here. And so the idea here is we have the Cauchy WebSocket stream. And so we're just streaming in bid and ask data for a particular event. In this case, uh, this is the uh, Seahawks versus the 49ers, and we're getting uh, bid and ask data. And then we have this ESPN Polar, which is our uh, source for data. And so we're requesting uh, the ESPN API repeatedly, uh, parsing out the latest play, seeing how it impacted the probability. And then we have this spike processor to be like, oh, did the, um, did the probability spike above X percent, which we're con we can configure in a config file? And if it does, then we can actually uh, tr execute a trade based on that. So that's kind of the high level overview. Um, I kind of put some code snippets in here and I used to write out every line of code on the channel as I did this stuff, but uh, I can tell just by uh, YouTube dashboards and stuff, people don't want to watch people code anymore. Uh, you can ask Claude Code, ChatGPT, and all that stuff. So I'm kind of adapting to the real world that no one really cares to see me code that much anymore. And so I'm just describing this at a higher level and then putting the, the snippets of code here. And so uh, you can connect to um, a Cauchy WebSocket using the WebSocket client in Python. And then all you do is send a message to subscribe uh, to that WebSocket and we subscribe to particular market tickers. How do you get those mar market tickers? Well, each um, game has a market ticker. So uh, in my first Cauchy video I made, uh, I talked about the difference between a series, an event, and a market. And so in my code here, I have this uh, find games uh, script right here. And what that does is finds uh, every single series or every market in every event and every series that starts with a prefix called K uh, X NFL game, right? And so what I can do here for my find games.py, I can do a UV run uh, find games.py and I just print out all of, I call the Cauchy API to find um, all of the events that are NFL games uh, that start with this particular uh, prefix, right? And then I can find my Seattle versus uh, San Francisco game, which is right there. And so you can see here, I have market tickers. And so this is the uh, event contract. If I think San Francisco is gonna win, looks like they're probably gonna lose at this point. They only have a nine or 10% chance of winning, or I can buy uh, Seattle. And so in my code here, I have a uh, .env file. And you can see I insert the home and away ticker so I can apply this to every game. And so in this environment variable, I put the ticker of the home team. And so in this particular game, a Seattle is the home team. And so I'm gonna get that ticker and I put it here. And then I also get the San Francisco ticker as the away game. And then I also need the game ID for the ESPN polar so that I can call this uh, data feed right here uh, and get my data. And so I can paste in that game ID right here. And now I have what I need. And so I have a couple things right now. I have the ESPN client here, and all this does is pull the ESPN unofficial API with that special uh, URL format. Remember, we pass in the game ID. We get that JSON back and we parse all the plays here. And then I have a Cauchy client that subscribes uh, to the WebSocket, right? And so all I do is use the Cauchy API and subscribe to the WebSocket. Uh, I pass in my API keys and so forth, which I've already talked about um, in another video. And then I have a bot.py here that uh, instantiates both of those, right? So I can do a UV run Python bot.py and you can see it will actually connect to the Cauchy WebSocket. It subscribes to those two tickers and then I get a streaming WebSocket data coming in. And so you see my data stream is running right now. I see all of the odds changes that are happening on Cauchy. Uh, people are placing bets and so forth. And then I also am logging when ESPN probabilities change. And so what I'm gonna do here is log when uh, I see a play happen. And when I pull the ESPN unofficial API, eventually we're gonna get a new play and we'll see how that impacted the probability and we'll log it right here. And then I'm gonna go over to the N NFL stream real quick. Oh, here we go. Uh, home, 3.5% spike detected shotgun, uh, Sam Darnold. And so let's see.
let's see. Uh, let's see if we got this one. So Sam Darnold, someone's watching on TV. This is what they're seeing. Uh, he's passing short right. There you go. Uh, first down at, at the 20 yard line. And so you can see this happened well ahead of what happened on the TV. And you see there was a spike in probability to 3% because uh, Seattle is in uh, basically in the red zone at this point. And so you can see as a result of that uh, 3% spike, uh, we have the logic right now to just buy uh, if there's a 3% uh, spike in the odds probability. And so you can see right here, I, it simulated a buy. Um, and bought a yes contract uh, for Seattle and said it would exit at either uh, 95 cents or um, after a certain period of time. So I have two different uh, exit criteria here. Uh, you can see uh, it auto exited and just sold it at break even. So didn't didn't make any money and maybe we even lost uh, money on a commission right there. All right, and now we see uh, Walker for a touchdown right there. And let's look on our stream real quick. Let's see what's going on. Uh, you see uh, Seattle hasn't scored yet. So this ESPN feed is way ahead of what people are seeing on TV. And this also lets you know if you're just manually betting with your phone in real time while you're watching the game, you're like completely gam like everyone's ahead of you. So it's a complete, like it's the worst odds you could possibly have. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't be betting on this uh, in real time on your phone. And so you see uh, Walker here is going to score a touchdown because we already saw the future because we're looking at the raw data. But the problem is someone else probably has better data than us or someone in the stadium or whatever, and it probably has a slight edge there. And so I've tried to look in to see who is first or how to get the best data for this. And what a Google Deep Research agent told me is that there's a data latency hierarchy that the court siders, the people court side, see things first, and they're probably the quickest. And then there's these official feeds with sports radar partnerships that are gonna be really fast. Um, the best Kalshi uh, traders, the most sophisticated people that are betting a lot of money, uh, probably have uh, access to the expensive feeds that might be $5,000 a month. And then someone like me that's just using uh, free data, um, that might be 15 seconds, it might be uh, 30 seconds. And then if you're watching on cable TV or streaming on YouTube, there's buffering and all this other latency. And so anyone just betting based on what they see on TV is basically wasting their time. Uh, you gotta have the fastest data in order to bet on a real-time game or a better, a better model um, at the beginning of the game. Maybe you're just gonna bet on an individual game and not in, not in real time. So you shouldn't try to compete on speed. So is this bot useless? Like, why did I even share it if I don't think there's some big edge? First of all, if I had some big edge on this, I probably wouldn't share anything, but I thought this was a good example of um, architecture, right? And so um, any any type of bot you build like this, it's gonna still need to use Cauchy API. It's still gonna have this a similar pattern of subscribing uh, to a data feed, um, getting a signal from some other source. In this case, it was ESPN. And then you need to know how to programmatically uh, place an order if you want to uh, try this stuff. The other area I thought might be interesting is going into the economics category on Kaushi and detecting when there's sudden changes in odds of different uh, economic events on here. So uh, you you see odds of the what the Fed decision is gonna be, GDP growth, geopolitical conflicts, and so forth. There's a lot of people here that have some type of insider information that uh, are betting and you'll see these prices move and you might not know exactly why, but maybe someone knows something and you might be able to detect a sudden shift in odds and then maybe uh, adjust your portfolio or place an equity uh, order or something like that. And so there's a lot of interesting ideas to explore here still. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate sports because apparently that's 90% of the activity on Kaushi, at least at the moment. Um, if you want to actually build this, I could do a series on this. I, I did prepare some notebooks, but I'm not sure if anyone even cares about detailed coding tutorials anymore. So let me know in the comments if you want me to really, really break this down and not just do it at a high level. I just thought I'd share the overview and architecture of the idea and how this little experiment works that I just did. Uh, that's it. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video. Bye.